How's it going guys? In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can use onChange in Xcode. And we're going to be building this very simple application that allows us to enter some text such as this is a sentence that I will write. And as you can see, it has a number counter that's live. It changes the caller based on the amount of characters we have in here. And if we go back, it's going to turn orange. And then it's also going to turn red if we don't have enough. Otherwise, it's also going to be set to black if there's nothing at all. So we're going to be using onChange to achieve this. And we can get started immediately by creating our sample project, which requires three add state variables to get started. So add state private var text if type string is going to equal an empty string, add state private var caller of type caller is going to be set initially to black and at state private var count of type int will be set to zero. Now, the first thing we want to do is get rid of the text and insert a Z stack, just like that, followed by an H stack. And the H stack is just going to be a container that's going to hold the text field and the counter. But let's go ahead and take care of the H stack first. So it's going to have a padding and an overlay with a style of rounded rectangle that has a corner radius of 30. And it's also going to have a stroke with a caller of caller and a line width of five. And then it's going to require another padding because everything inside the H stack is going to stretch this rounded rectangle all the way to each side of the screen. So inside here, let's go ahead and create a text field that says type something as always, and it's going to be bound to our text variable. So now it stretches to the side and we're also going to go ahead and create a text with the backslash count and it's going to be bold with the caller set to dot gray. And the text field is going to have a foreground caller set to our caller, which is going to update once we use on change. But now we have the basic skeleton. So all we have to do is implement the on change. And what on change is going to do is find out when this is going to change, how it changes, and it's going to keep track of the changes. So right below foreground caller, go ahead and type in dot on change. And it's going to have of a variable that's equatable, which in this case is our text. And we're going to pass in a closure for the perform. So inside here, we need to go ahead and say what we're returning, which is the text, the updated text in. And now we can use that freely inside here. So each time this changes, it's going to return the new value inside here. So for this program, we want to go ahead and let the letters get counted. And it's going to be the text with trimming characters in dot white spaces, because we do not want to count the white spaces dot count. So it's going to count all the characters that are not white spaces. And the self dot count is going to be set to the letters. So we can also update this small zero over here. Now, we also want to change what happens to the text when it reaches a certain count. So for this, we're going to go ahead and create a switch, which is going to take the letters and it's going to update based on the count of the letters. So the first case is going to be between one and less than 10, which is going to assign self.caller with the caller of red because it's not enough text. So we want the user to write even more text. Otherwise, we're going to create another case. And I always do this awfully. This is supposed to be a case without the colon. And here it's going to be 10 to 20. And with that, we can go self.caller is going to equal dot orange. And finally, we have everything that's above 20. So we can just do 20 to infinite and everything in here, self.caller is going to be set to dot green. And since this does require an exhaustive statement, we have to go ahead and provide a default and say self.caller is set to dot black. So now with that being done, we can go ahead and run this program because now we're counting each time the text changes. We're counting what is the new letter count and the letter count is going to be used to determine the caller of our text bar over here. Plus it's going to display the amount of letters each time we update it. So let's go ahead and run this program and you're going to get the same bar as from earlier. So now you can go ahead and type something such as type something neat. And once we have 20 characters, it's going to turn green and we can type as much as we want. There's no spell check, so it's very easy. 
and of course we can delete it all. And then we can start again by typing, this is another sample string. And as you can see, at 30 letters, it turns green. If we go backwards, it's going to turn orange. And finally, it's going to turn red below 10 or black when it's at zero. So essentially, that's a very simple way of using the dot on change. It just listens for changes. And you can, of course, put whatever code you want inside here for any kind of variable that you want to keep track of the changes inside your UI. But with that being said, that's actually all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.